Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the most important NYCFC talk show. That is right. It is time for the Dudes in Blue. It's episode number 158. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm your host, Joe Amato, and alongside me, as always, Antonino. Dude, what's going on? Not too much. Here we are yet again, another Monday night, recording a show, episode number 158. Why? I, dude, I don't know. I don't know why we're doing this. This is <laughs> <laughs> you tell us in the comments. Tell us in the comments why we're doing this. Uh, anyway, <laughs> we're, we're going to we're going to try to have some fun. We got some NYCFC to talk about. Uh, we've got, of course, the Women's World Cup to dive into this week. Of course, we've got U.S. men's national team lighting things up against the team that they should light it uh, light up against. Uh, a couple other things maybe on the docket. We'll talk about some some good, some bad, some ugly. And uh, we're going to have some fun while we do it. Or at least we're going to try. We're going to try. We're going to try. I will say that. We give it the old college try. If you're watching on the Facebook Live feed, start dropping those comments. Let us know where you are watching from. If you're listening on the pod, thanks so much for spending the time with us. We are Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at Dudes in Blue. That is how to get a hold of us. That is how it is done. So uh, we're going to dive into some. Uh, we'll start with NYCFC like we normally do. But before we do that, let me just say a couple quick hellos to Anthony J. Buckley saying, dudes, what is up? Uh, what's going on, buddy? Oh, hey, my mom's up? checking in. What's up, mom? Chris Martinez saying, what's going on? Felix, you're David Field checking yeah. in from Pennsylvania. Hey, thanks, guys. Thanks so much for uh, spending some time with us. And if you're watching on the broadcast, uh, please share the feed with your Facebook friends that love NYCFC. And if they haven't heard of the dudes in blue, look, I, I just I was going through some some podcast shuffling today, and I noticed that several of the other pods have not released a show in several weeks. Some uh, as late as back in May. Uh, I know that Mike over at Blue City Radio has been in France for the Women's World Cup, so I know he's he's been kind of out of the loop. But if you're looking for some NYCFC content, damn it, we're still going to try to put some on for you. We're always here. We're always uh, we're always ready to go. And good, bad, or ugly, like we always say, it's a uh, it's, uh, discussion. I, this season just been so friggin' weird with the, 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 the like what seems like month-long breaks at a time. Uh, it's very choppy. And then the form and it's just a whole bunch of stuff we'll probably get into. Later on, it just had a really weird feel to it so far. I'm going to warn you, and I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but I'm feeling particularly salty tonight. And uh, it's for it's for a few reasons, most of which are soccer related. So uh, at least there's that, you know, like life is pretty good, but maybe not so much in the, <laughs> in the world of soccer for me, at least <laughs> at least from my perspective, we'll probably get into it. Uh, I don't want I, I dude I, I like we texted before I don't want this to turn into a whole episode of Joe's rants so I'm gonna try my best to keep it positive keep it light keep it fun but I don't think people I don't think people want to see that but I, I don't exactly exactly that's not what people pay for that's long. not what they pay for to watch <laughs> when they watch our show I don't uh, think they pay for what I don't think they pay for their show that's is that <laughs> why so therefore we have the mic. And you will listen to every single word I have to say. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Well, look, let's let's get the obvious out of the way and uh, just talk real quick about NYCFC's new winger. Uh, it is Gary McKay Stephen Stephen McKay. He sounds like a law firm. Gary Gary's okay, Stephen. Gary's okay, Stephen. <laughs> So he's gonna call him Gary three names. He's gonna he's got he has a, a, a an Italian nickname right away. He's Gary three names. That's Gary all it is. Gary tree names. Tree names. Gary tree names. Listen, Gary tree names. So we signed another winger, who's left footed, plays on the right hand side, right? Uh, which which begs the question: When the hell is he gonna play? Right? Or like, who are we? Who who are we moving? Uh, to get him playing time, or, or what's going on? What's the roster moves? Um, hey, the window opens up, I think, the tenth, maybe. Um, I know it's like the second week of July for sure. Um, but yeah, like what what's going on here? Why why are we why are we loading up in, in spots where we're already struggling to get people minutes? Uh, and what's the point? Now I know he can play uh, um, other roles in the midfield. But again, why are we acquiring people that we're trying to fit in places that they're not naturally, you know, playing? 
I think it's just it's it's bad for business when you do something like that. You just got most people can't do it. Um, most people can't do it well for a, a sustained period of time, which is what you really need. Um, so again, I, I'm not gonna bash them on the signing, but I just want to know how you plan on getting people minutes because you're already struggling to get people minutes. Um, you know, as it is. So, Maybe they think uh, we're gonna I, go far in the Open Cup. Yeah, I mean, but you only got a few more games. <laughs> well, you sign somebody to get them two games, and that's it. Like, uh, I don't, I don't see that being, a, I don't see that being a really good reason. Uh, uh, to Felix is saying, game. Felix is saying that Gary Three Names was a solid pickup. Uh, look, we thought. Uh, I'm sure he is. I'm sure he is. But if he's not going to play, it's not a good pickup. But uh, who's the per? Who is the? Who is the play? If he does get get the minutes. Yeah, who's he replacing? We talked about this when Matriza was hurt and when Matriza was going to be 90 minutes fit. Who was he going to take the place of? Right? Yeah. Now, for me, unfortunately, just naturally the way that this uh, Gary Three Names plays, it's kind of Gary natural. Three. It's kind of, What? Gary Three Names is sticking. It's a, it's done. It's like totally <laughs> done. I don't, care if, I don't care if the dude never sees the pitch. He will always be Gary Three Names. Gary <laughs> I'm getting a jersey, Gary. Three names, you know. It's so like he's 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 a natural player to fit into Ishmael Tajiri Shradi's role. He can also play. Does Tati, Tati will play on the right hand sometimes? Like I don't know. It's just the only other know. thing I can think of is: is did you bring him in to be a super sub off the bench? That's really all I can think of. Um, and which is fine if you're bringing him as a depth a depth player that he knows his role is going to be off the bench playing for uh, 15 to 30 minutes, uh, you know, at a clip, and he can give relief to somebody on either side of the field. Um, uh, all you know that that's fine. Uh, again, we don't know that it's a free transfer, which is what we've become particularly good at finding. Uh, and it's not to say that a lot of the guys we've picked up uh, that we haven't really heard about before um, didn't work well. I mean, you've got guys that obviously we never heard of that didn't pan out. But you've also got guys that we've never heard of before that have played particularly well. Uh, Tinnerholm, for example, Alex Ring. Um, you, nobody heard of these guys beforehand. Uh, but they came here and they Most and people still haven't. Good. But <laughs> Well, there you go. Exactly. Most people still have Um very interesting uh, uh, time for transfers and just uh, reconfiguring the roster. And I just don't know, uh, do we have pieces to sell? Do we have pieces to move? Are, are we seeing that people have not really... Here's Nina. Oh, excuse me. I'm so sorry. <laughs> What's going on? I'm sorry. Like, oh, yeah. Um, that <clears throat> Medina. Oh, my number, God. Dude, there it is again. Sorry. I got like this tickle in my throat. Medina. <laughs> oh, God. I'm so sorry. That, listen, that's my number one target to move, and unfortunately, um, it's hard to sell someone that's underperforming. Um, whether the potential is there or not, uh, I'm sure it is, but I just don't think the work ethic or the confidence matches up uh, with it particularly well. Uh, and I think the taking up of a DP slot is really detrimental to this club, especially uh, at a time where – uh, you're looking at a lot of other clubs that are just uh, their their big names are doing good great things. Uh, we should be one of those clubs that has our DP slots filled and, and locked and loaded and ready to go. Um, and it's just not working, and it's it's taking up it's taking up space. Uh, and he's another the player. The guy not cannot admitted. find minutes in an open cup match. Yeah, uh, he couldn't find the net. I mean, for he did. For three, Four shots. He did. Yeah, Credit three to him. Or four shots. To, threw him three or four open opportunities to blow before he got one. But um, again, I it's the same thing every week. Uh, he's either not going to play or he's not playing well enough to get in. So again, like, but you keep filling, you keep putting people in these spots where the guys that are playing well, you're getting players to replace them, and it's just what, what are we doing here? We have a dire need at left back. I think you have another need at center forward because. As you can see, when Ebert, uh is out, you know who's really going to fill that role with that with that goal scoring prowess. Uh, I think Tati could do it, but again, if you need Tati to play elsewhere, or if you, you know, I mean, again, you want somebody with Ebert scoring prowess. So if you're going to get somebody that's going to bang in those shots, uh, bang in those those 
uh, you know, those timing goals, those right place, right time goals, you got to find somebody to, to play in that spot behind them. So, uh, there you go. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> very much so. Um, and then Sweet you need Thomas. another center back, I think. I really think that when you look at what happens, especially to us when you had international break and different tournaments going on, all of a sudden you're, you're in injuries, you know, your four or five center backs become two. And, and then what do you do? Um, now you got to play a four, three, four, four, three, three. And you're juggling, uh, you're juggling lineups. You're juggling statistics, uh, statistics. statistics. You're juggling. How are you juggling statistics? That's statistics. How do you what am ju- I trying to say? Juggling. Uh, Fergus, juggling, dude. Fergus on what we're talking about. Juggling. Uh, that motion is uh, fantastic, too. Systems. I don't know what, what is happening here. <laughs> you're just juggling systems. You know, I know. Little peck pop, little peck pops. Um, yeah, you're just juggling uh, different styles of play, and it's just you don't you don't always want to do that. You want to be you want to have depth in the right areas, and we have depth right now. But I think our depth players are the ones that are suffering because they can't find minutes. Um, and the places we need depth, we don't have it. So um, it's going to be a really really interesting transfer window. And I think uh, if we're going to make a long run, uh, listen, we have a lot of games in a short period of time. Uh, people are going to be injured. People are not going to be able to play all these games. So people will get minutes, but I think you have to be stacked at each position um, where you're two or three deep where you can get guys to play. And unfortunately, right now we don't because of injury. So uh, uh, now is the time to start bolstering and, and seeing what you got and loaning out who you can um, that can use the minutes. Um, that's always a valuable option, as we saw with James Sands. Uh, even uh, Jonathan Lewis to an extent. So uh, we'll see what happens. So the transfer window, so it's not officially open? No, I think it's the 10th. I think it's – Okay. I'm, I'll just look it up for you. You, you can uh, – All right. You can go on what you were saying here. All right. So so this is, this is an important period for NYCFC, right, as a club. It's year five, and I'm a, I'm a little bit concerned. Uh, I'm going to just – uh, remove this little uh, headline there. I- I'm a little bit concerned about the club's relevance. Now, hear me out. This is where I'm going to start to get deep. We're going to be get- we're going to be going in the weeds together. I got an email today, as you did, as you did as well, dude. Uh, I did. And I don't know if anybody else did, but if you're a founding member, uh, NYCFC season ticket holder, founding member, meaning you uh, you started year one with season tickets. I got an email as a founding member offering me two free tickets to Saturday's match against Philadelphia Union at Yankee Stadium. Now, that's a giant red flag for me, number one, right? If And, and, and if I'm not mistaken, dude, you got two tickets in section 109, which yeah, is prime real got, estate. <laughs> you, so you can actually pick where you want to, if you didn't right. get the email, um, yeah, you can kind of pick where you wanted your seats. They gave you options. You wanted sideline. You wanted uh, behind the net. You can pretty much pick, and they gave you the options. Uh, and it, I was – that was one of my concerns is that, all right, well, yeah, they're giving away two tickets. They're but section they're probably 238. Trying to fill a, yeah, they're trying to fill one section up with all these extra people. Um, but, no, there were actually options, and there was options in 107. There were options in 108. There were options in 109. Uh, I happen to sit in 109, so I took the two tickets that were in that section, so that way we can kind of sit somewhat close together. Um, but yeah, I took advantage because I had two people that wanted to go, and my wife and my mother, uh, with along with me and my dad as usual. So uh, we're going to take advantage. But David didn't get that offer, and he's a founding member. David, if I could give you email. mine, I would give them to you. Yeah, go check your email. Um, honestly, if you log in, I'm going to give you a big secret, and I don't care if I get in trouble. Uh, log in to your account, and then in the promotion code for your tickets, uh, I think it's 2019 founding is the code, and make sure that the offer uh, thingy is checked and and try it that way. So so okay, so we get this email: two free tickets to Philadelphia Union game on Saturday at Yankee Stadium. Oh, fantastic! Which is a pretty good game, by the way. Okay, yes, first in the East against first in the middle. Uh. <laughs> It's like being it's, a size extra medium. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's right. It's, it's right. It's an extra medium. That's that's hysterical. So here's what here's my concern. My concern number one is that they can't sell tickets. That's that's my like to me as a as a as a supporter. I'm concerned that you cannot fill the stadium. And we've seen like look, 
that we know season tickets, they're dwindling. They're becoming less and less and less and less and less. And attendance is down and down and down. And this is this is not also necessarily um, an NYCFC problem as it is uh, as much of a league problem. But it's not all teams. It's it's the league as a whole. But here's here's my issue. And, and this is why this this transfer window, I think, is incredibly important. And and I might get some hate and I might get some flack for this, for saying something like this. But I'm telling you right now, if NYCFC wants to become a relevant name in the New York sports world, they need to do two things. They need to win and they need a name. And here is why. How many NYCFC fans became NYCFC fans because of David Villa or because of Andrea Pirlo or because of Frank Lampard, right? And how many people became MLS fans because of Wayne Rooney and because of Zlatan Ibrahimovic and, and you know, uh, even Beckham to an extent, you know, back in the day or Terry Henry or anything like that, that latch on to these teams. Those guys, as much as you think that this is a retirement league or it's got that kind of name. It gets that kind of reputation. I'm going to tell you right now, I really don't give a crap. I care about full stadiums. I care about selling jerseys and I care about winning. And when you have the names that deliver the talent, that deliver the goals, a few things happen. You put asses in the seats, you sell jerseys on people's backs, and maybe every now and then you're going to win something. And here's another thing that happens. You and I, dude, you and I would not have given a crap about Tommy McNamara if NYCFC did not get the attention that it got because of the stars that we had that came to this club. I agree with that 100%. Um, now, the guys you're talking about, the guy, I, I, I'll, I'm going to refer to them as the door openers. These are the guys that are going to get you interested enough to come to the stadium to watch a game. And it's up to the team from that point. With all the other pieces, where whether it be a stadium, the uniforms, the game day atmosphere, and the other players that they surround these guys with, is what's going to keep you there. These big names are just to get you into the door, which is what they did. They really did. They, these big guys, they got us in the door, and, and we're not the only ones. And the big and we don't have the league and the team does not have the storied history where you can sell that history. Uh, this is not like, Man United. This is not it's, it's not Liverpool. Exactly my point. So what you have to realize is that you need some of these guys to open the door to get fans interested in this league and specifically this team uh, for us because we don't we don't have one of those guys and there's no one to get super excited about because let's face it to be for a majority of the of of our team's fans. You're excited about certain players because you were introduced to them by the big names. And you're told you're hundred percent right. We would not have cared a damn lick about Tommy McNamara, about Alex Ring, Anton Tinnerholm, if we weren't introduced to the team by one of or all three of the th big names that we had to start off. It's just now here's, the way here's another thing that happens. Here's another thing that happens. Now Let's say Alexander Matriza scores an absolute banger of a goal for NYCFC. It's the 90th minute. It's it where you know where it, it's tied 1-1. It's the 92nd minute, and he launches launches a shot from 25, 30 yards out, and he hits it top bins. Beautiful goal, absolutely crazy. He might get some coverage here in New York in New York State around the city, and some maybe even some of the regional stuff, right? Zlatan Ibrahimovic scores a 25, 30 yard goal in, in the 92nd minute for uh, uh, to win a game over anybody. That's going to go around the entire country. It's going to go around the entire world because it's Zlatan Ibrahimovic. Nobody gives a crap about a, a guy who played in the first first division of the Romanian league. Who, dude, name me a team from the Romanian league. Thank you. The Rom exactly. Yeah. Romanian city. Uh, <laughs> The Romanian, yeah, no, I don't. Okay, I don't. we announced we announce a winger today from the Scottish Prem from Aberdeen. Now I've heard of that team, but name me another player on that team. Wait, isn't that the team that Vincent Company just became? I have no idea. Or no, yeah. I could no, no, no. no. He's no, 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 Belgium. Never mind. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, wrong country. My mis <laughs> see? Do you see? Anyway, I don't even know my geography anymore. I have no idea. There, dude, between the Copa America, I don't know who's in South America, who's in CONCACAF, who's in Comnibal, who's in the women's – I have no idea anymore. 
my all of my my point is is that this transfer window for NYCFC is very important. We get a name. I'm sorry, and I, I and I don't want to sound like just this fanboy, but you need this. The stadium is becoming empty. It's becoming empty. And when you're not selling tickets, the club gets hurt. The atmosphere is not the same. The team doesn't play as well. Things just don't seem to happen. When David Villa was here, at least you knew that something something magical could have happened. There's a player that you're there to 100% see, and that was him. We do not have that anymore. I, I'm a huge fan of this club. I love Alex Ring as our captain. I love Anton Tinnerholm. But but these guys are not going to drag. They're not going to drag. 25,000 people to Yankee Stadium week in and week out. They're not going to do it. No. They're not going to do up, it. What ends up happening is, in situations like this, it'll dwindle down to the point where only the diehard fans are left. And then what happens? The team ends up alienating those fans because they're trying to attract the casual ones that will come and spend the money and do their thing and have a constant rotation of doesn't matter who they are as long as they fill the stadium. So they're going to give away tickets and they're going to give you packages that are 80, 90, hundred dollars less than what we spend on this. They're devaluing devaluing the game. You're devaluing your season ticket holders is what you're doing. Um, And now, so now look, look at this. You're giving season ticket holders two free tickets. Pretty cool. Awesome. But at the same time, these are seats that, you know, most of us had to pay for. We've had to pay, you know, we had to pay $35, $40, $20, whatever it is that you spend per mat, you know, per per ticket per game. Now you're getting a free you're giving away free tickets for people trying to hope people come in, but you're you this just goes along with the summer deal from last year or the college deal where uh, seats that we paid premium prices for uh, are being totally devalued. What's the what's where's the value in me being a season ticket holder? It, meeting the players? What what I mean, like yeah, they're cool guys and everything, but like there's no star power. There's nobody I really like have to meet. Like and then I'm not saying that good. I mean there are they are meeting players and being able to share time with players is always amazing uh, from a fan or media standpoint, regardless. Um, but like, again, like once you meet these guys once, it's like, all right, yeah, I kind of know, like, you know, they're, they're everyday guys. It's cool. But like, is that all the value you're getting for your season ticket holders? Your post game meet and greets? Most of the post game, most of the stuff that season ticket holders get, you got to pay extra for anyway, or you have to pay through the notes to get the points to get them. Uh, you Chris, know, I don't need uh... a belt to- I don't need a Delta C's. I don't need a Delta seat upgrade. Like I want to watch the game from the field. I don't want to watch it from 30 miles away. Chris Martinez on Facebook says, I am so over big names after watching Pirlo defend corner kicks. What, regardless of whether or not, regardless of how he played, regardless of how he played when he was here, how many people did you see in the stands wearing Pirlo shirts? Thank you. Regardless Thank you. of how the and, man and- played. But, but people are people are like people are making it seem like he was Fabio Cannavaro, and when he got here, he was Paolo Cannavaro. <laughs> like the dude never played defense. The dude never played defense. He was bought. He didn't even shoot the ball right, here. But Chris, Chris is now bought- asking. Chris is now asking. Where are they now? There's a great question. The team needs to do a job of retaining that clientele, and the way you retain that clientele is by putting a beautiful product out there. You are not yeah. going to buy Adidas shirts if they're not pretty to look at. It's not going to happen. Yeah. It's the, the, you're, you're... This is a game of attention. This is a game of attention. The players <laughs> that have the most attention are the ones that are going to bring the most. You, the United, I'll tell you right now, dude. The United States does not have a soccer fan problem. It has a major league soccer fan problem. Because there's plenty of fans here in the States that watch the Premier League and La Liga and the Bundesliga and Ligue 1 and the Serie A and they even watch uh, the Liga MX. Okay? But they're not watching MLS. You know why? Because their favorite players are playing elsewhere. Yeah. And that's yeah. why. If, yeah. if all we're going to do is go after second-rate South American players that can't even crack their national teams... Right, that or, nobody's ever heard of, or or, or or Romanian players that nobody's ever heard of. Where where are we going as a, as a, as an identity? 
When you're yeah. under the City Football Group name, I don't care that that's our parent company. That's one of the biggest football companies in the world. And when New York City, in the biggest, one of the biggest cities in the world, a team that plays in New York City that came in with such strong power and such strong names and, and a fun product on the field, the first season was a total wash. Don't get me wrong. But when you're in that, when you're in that kind of scenario, you've got to produce. You've got to bring the talent. You've got to bring the star power. It's going to bring people in. It's going to bring soccer fans in. It's going to bring casual soccer fans in. Yeah, listen, that, the, these the, those guys, and the, but don't get me wrong, they have to produce because we're not stupid soccer fans. We understand that there there are people that come in that you want to watch play and you want to see them play well. You don't want to see guys come in and not play well. But Wayne Rooney has hold, come in and he's played well. But hold on. When Beckham came here to play with the Galaxy, I think he played for three seasons, if I'm not mistaken. I believe his first two seasons with the with the Galaxy, they were terrible. And yet, they still killed it because it was David Beckham. Yeah, but didn't they end up winning with him? They, at the end, yes. Okay, yeah, but still they but won. But they put out a crap product in the beginning, but because it was him, they still drove the fans. The fans still latched on. That's how you do it. Listen, We the latched on are... in 2015 in a team that finished almost dead last. Come yeah. on. But listen, we were able to turn it around, and you you got a playoff a playoff team, and then you know, the, listen, there's a lot of things that are have been culminating to get us to this point, and the league doesn't do itself any favors by having a salary cap and a DP rule and things like but that. But that's fine. But that's but but that's not something that's hurting us because of the because of the roster that we have. Do well, you, it is you when see? you what it, well it is when you get Jesus Medina. That, and that's what I'm talking about. He's useless, see, and now you're taking a spot away from did someone. Did you see how much? Did you see how little we're spending on salary compared to what we spent uh, like two years ago? Yeah, and listen, it's not always a bad thing. Well, I, at the same I'm not, time, I'm not I using think, that as like the the ultimate no, no. measuring stick. No. Well, you get people that are mad because of the they go after guys who are on free transfer. There are there are guys that are on free transfer that will do good because they just fit you know here well. Some guys just need a, a change of pace. They need a, a different scenario. Uh, they're not happy at, at a club and it's hurting their performance because their confidence is is low or or whatever the case may be. There's nothing wrong with trying to save money that way, but you gotta spend it where you gotta spend it, and you gotta be able to bring in the names. To do so, and I'm not saying you got to bring in a guy who's 40 years old, but if you can figure out how to get someone uh, like a like a like a Vela to, to come in and play and spend three or four years here and, and and build something like we were starting to build with 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 Via and Pirlo and Lampard, uh, you, you've you've got to be able to do it, and it's it's hard because it's not like you could just go pick a player and hey come play here they're gonna have to come and want they have they're gonna have to come here and want to do it um so it's not just a one it's not like one issue or one thing will save everything and, and turn everything around there's a lot of different things that would need to happen but i, I agree i i think uh you've in the in the biggest market in one of the biggest markets in this league um, there are certain teams you can't afford to have fans be disinterested in. And uh, even though we're newer, uh, this is one of them. This is one of the markets where you really need to have guys uh, shining, um, performing too, because it's a hard place to play. And it, that's any sport. Any sport that we have, um, if guys aren't performing, you're going you're to hear about it. Uh, so, again, listen, how awesome would it be if you had a guy like Zlatan here or a guy like Wayne Rooney here? The place would be packed every night because these guys can still play, and we had that with Via. But you know what? Like, once you let once uh, Pirlo and Lampard retire, and you you know you brought in Maxi. Now Maxi's been really 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 good, but not yeah, star but dude, power. But dude, he scores a banger. Who's gonna watch it? Exactly. Who's exactly. gonna watch it? We need the exactly. attention. Listen. We we legitimately need the attention. So so when I see uh, another winger from the Scottish Premier League that literally nobody's ever heard of. And the club is super excited about it. And listen, I will welcome him with open arms. Welcome to the club, okay? And this is not this is not Gary McKay Stevens' fault. This is I'm not I'm not jumping. I'm not like we're not blaming Gary Tree names. I'm not. I don't want to get on. This is not me attacking Gary Tree names. No, right? You can't attack the players. You, there's no way you can attack the players. I'm not. This is that. I'm not. This is not about. This is not about the players that we have. The point is, is that this is the time where you need to make something happen. 
the way that the season has gone and the way that the last couple of seasons have gone with declining declining attendance, declining season ticket holders, you know, getting knocked out of the out of the playoffs in the first round uh, two years in a row and then last year not making it. Look, I'm sorry. We need something to get excited about. We need something to get excited about. U.S. Open Cup, fantastic. Let's take that thing all the way all the way to the end. I'll be happy to win a piece of hardware before the Red Bulls. But you want to know something? It's not MLS Cup. It's not MLS Cup. No, no, it's not. I it's, would be happy for this. I would I would be ecstatic for this club. And if 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 the team makes it to the final and it's away, I would almost consider traveling to it just because it's because it's a monumental occasion for the club. But I'm sorry, it's the players, damn it. It's about the players. We need players. We need players people have heard of that they want to go and see. Because nobody is going to buy season tickets to go watch a guy that they've never freaking heard of. It doesn't happen. Yeah. No, it's – it's it, it's. there's that part of it. There's the stadium part of it. That's another big issue. Okay. Uh, there's more than one – there's a lot more things. It's not it, – again, it's not – one solid piece that's going to turn everything around. It's not the one thing that you're going to do, you know, that's going to turn everything around, but you have to have a lot of different things. And uh, again, he, the you're not going to have it at every position. I understand that. No, no, you, you can't. can't like the, the league can't. does not lend itself to that. It's impossible. No, but you're, you have to have that, that, that person that's going to that open the door. Catalyst. That you get, yeah, he's going to open the door. You're going to come and watch him. And then, you know what? I've always liked this guy. He's he's great. He's playing fantastic. But I, but this who's guy, that to Jury Shradi? This guy grabbed my attention. I like him. I like the way he plays. I like the way this guy plays. All of a sudden, now I'm a fan of the team. Now I'm going to three or four games a season. Now at the end of the season, I'm like, you know what? That was a lot of fun. We did pretty good. Next year, season tickets. Boom. That's what a lot of people did. A lot of people did that. You think people would be buying Poku shirts? I. Dude, that's a prime example. Another you know what I mean? Prime example. No, you wouldn't care. You wouldn't care. People would have gotten behind the team the first year, and if they bombed the first year without those names, game over. Yep. Game Correct. over. It was just yeah, these guys. It's not really what I what we expected. It's really not what we you know not what we really wanted. Um, and and it, dude, I'm t- and this, the, I say it's more than just putting out a good soccer product on the field because you can win. Look at look at look at the New York Red Bulls. New York was a perf- perfect example. New York Red Bulls, uh, Supporter Shield winners, you know, MLS Cup contenders, never won because they suck. But that's an empty stadium. And you want to know something? Yeah. They win a lot of games. They win a lot of games. But yeah. nobody's going. But nobody really cares. Mm-hmm. Why? When Terry Henry was here, people gave a crap. Yeah, no, it's still not as much, but, you know. More than they do now. Yeah. Yeah, listen. I have uh, talked to people that used to have season tickets. Now they don't. I used to go to all the games. Now I don't. Yeah. I don't care. You want to you wanna label it a retirement league as a negative thing? I don't really care. I don't really care. If you give me Zlatan Ibrahimovic scoring goals the way that <laughs> that mother does, I don't care how old he is. He can be 48 at, years old scoring goals like that. I don't give a crap. I'm going to buy a Zlatan shirt. But look at guys like like Carlos Vela. Carlos Vela is not not ready was not ready for retirement. It's very Even close. Very, the dude's lighting it up. Yeah, and at a ridiculous pace, may I add. Um, and it just takes guys. You, you gotta get guys like that in the league, and, and open okay. up people's eyes. But it's not it's not it's not an easy thing to do. I understand that hundred percent. But uh, you would expect that from your bigger markets to kind of get people's eyes open. And it's just, um, I don't know. Like, again, this year has been so freaking weird where you've had lapses in schedule. Um, you've had a lot of, a lot of time off. You had a really poor form in the beginning of the season that kind of, uh, you know, we sputtered out of the shoots there. And it's, it has made this season, uh, in my opinion, and, and yours as well, I'm sure, it's a little disinteresting at times. Uh, I'm having you know, a tough time. In, in the off weeks, you know, like I've, Found other things to do, and I've just I haven't even thought about the team. Um, you know, it, it's uh, save the fact that we won our open cup game and you had another one, but now look, you had a week off in, even in between that and the regular season now. Um, and then you go watch other soccer and you see big names playing, you're just like, Yeah, it's it's not really close, 
It's not really close. And then on top of it, to boot, now we come back. We finally get back. And now we've got six games in 16 days. That they can't literally give away tickets to. Unbelievable. Um, and again, it's not just a, a, a team problem. It's a league problem. It's a, it's a big issue all over the place. Do you, re- do you think Do you think that Paris Saint-Germain would have been interested in Luciano Acosta had it not been for Wayne Rooney? Mm. Luciano Costa was good. He was good. Nobody gave a crap about him until he started teaming up with Wayne Rooney. Do you really think that in LA, in LAFC, that uh, Diego Rossi would get as much attention as he did, if not for Carlos Vela? Do you really think that down in Atlanta, that down in Atlanta, Julian Gressel would get as much attention as he's gotten be, if it weren't for Miguel Almiron or Joseph Martinez? Look at Miguel Amaron as a prime example. You think he would have gotten any play if Joseph Martinez wasn't scoring goals at a clip? Now, Joseph Martinez is a, is a, a funny uh, anomaly in this situation because he wasn't a big name beforehand. Right. He, no, he wasn't true. a huge name that everybody knew. But, he but you have Tata Martino at, at the helm. Too. Yeah. Now, if we had a guy that was scoring, you know, if, if Matriza was scoring, you know – 30 goals this season. If he was running away with the golden story. boot, he'd get the attention. Yeah, for sure. For, for sure. But he's not. Um, and and in a place like New York where everything is pretty much demanded and it's a downfall, I think, uh, in my opinion. But everything is so fast-paced. Everything is we got to have it yesterday. Um, patience is, is very thin here. Um, uh, and especially when you're going on – with all the extracurricular stuff that's going on with the stadium and uh, fans and things of that nature, it's a uh, it's a it's a tough one. Uh, Look, the, the the moral of the story for me, dude, and we have spent a lot of time talking about this tonight. And I feel you know we ranted, we ranted the hell out of this. We thing. shouldn't, you know. It sounds kind of negative, but it's because it kind of is. Uh, you know, I I want to. See, I lost my train of thought. I got, I lost my Furcus, dude. I lost my Furcus. I went flat on this one. Listen, the fact that we've only lost one game and feel this way, is uh, a but that's that's the issue. That's the issue. D- look, at the end of the day, here's what I want. I'm, bring, I'm I'm trying to bring it home here. At the end of the day, I implore NYCFC to sign somebody that we give a crap about. Not saying that we won't care about Gary McKay or Gary Tree names, whatever we're going to call him. Not to say that we don't that we're not going to care about him, and not to say that we don't care about the players that we have. And I'm because I'm not talking about us. I'm talking about I'm talking about the, the 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 casual soccer fan. I'm also talking about the diehard soccer fan, but that doesn't give a crap about MLS. Who lives in New York City? Who's a gigantic Liverpool fan and has never been to an NYCFC game? Those are the guys you got to go after. I'll be honest with you. There's a guy who lives down the street. Um, he's a he's a uh, the husband of of a, of a close friend. Um. And big soccer fan. He's from Venezuela, and he loves soccer. And, you know, I mentioned NYCFC. He's like, oh, where do they play? I'm like, wow. Like, come on. Come on. You got to be interested. You got to have – you got to generate interest. And it's it's very difficult to do in this day and age with all the extracurricular stuff you can do, with all the discretionary income you can be spending elsewhere. And and you're spending it sparingly because – it's not as prevalent as it used to be. Dude, we um, were doing well. But, yeah. And it came to a yeah. screeching halt. Yeah, I, I agree. And Listen, it started it's, it's problem. with Eloy Amagat. Oh. <laughs> we Amagat the wrong guy. I totally forget who originally sent us that that tweet, but we Amagat the wrong guy. That sounds like a David a David, uh, David Fowle thing. I think, I think it was him. It might have been him. Yeah, you might be right. I, dude, again – like this is what I want. I just want a player. And some who somebody asked here, Chris Martinez is asking, in what position though? What would be ideal for you at this point? Give it's me Vincent Company at center back. I don't give a yeah, crap. Yeah, no. I, here's the thing. I don't. I don't think the league warrants spending uh, that kind of money on defensive players. I think if you're going to spend that much money, the guy's got to produce uh, on the scoreboard somehow. Um, I don't even think a big name keeper at this point would probably do it because. Let's face it. You can get keepers that are fantastic that never touch the ball. Um, you know, so I think you need somebody that's an attacking player 
um, midfield on forward, and he's got to he's he's got to generate interest, and it's it's hard to do because if the guys aren't out there, you can't just like make them appear. You just can't do it. It's so it's a it's it's again it's not just an issue that uh, it's negligent on one team's part. It's all these little pieces have to kind of be in the right place for things to happen, um, and it's happened for other teams. And it, it, we had our opportunities in the beginning. Um, and now it's time to like just you, finding a, a good player who's going to add value to the team, who's going to bring fans in the seats that get to on and the off the field. Yes, and but to make the team better, make them win. To make them win, you win, you keep rolling, and then all of a sudden, after you win three or four times, and you've got 10, 15 years in the league, all of a sudden now, you know what? That team, that team's a really good team to play for. Uh, you know, I want to play for them. I want to. If I'm going to go to MLS, I want to play for New York City. They also you know? set the expectation. They set the expectation when they started that they were going to be the Yankees. They were going to be the Yankees, and they were going to have star power. And even the guys that they brought up with from within were going to be huge stars. That's a little stretch because it's very hard to do that here with, um, you know, with soccer. <laughs> you don't have to. You don't have you know, eleven year old Messi coming in. Uh, I have to put a comment up. Do it. What is it? No, not that one. Uh, Angel says, remember that woman that ran half naked in the Champions League final? She went viral. So who's going to take one for the team? Listen, (laughs) if I wore a unitard and ran across the field, I'm pretty sure (laughs) that's it. I think the team just closes up shop at that point. They're like, we've hit rock bottom. (laughs) No, what? Yeah, you know. We've hit rock bottom. We did a good five-year run. Let's close it up and try to do something else in Australia. Let's have unitard races at halftime. That'll drum, drum up interest. Yeah, let's let's turn – let's turn. we already play on a baseball field. We might as well turn it into a minor league baseball game at the half. You know what I mean? Hey, but you know what? The Yankees are finally going to get to know what it feels like because they're going to play at Wembley, I think, uh, in the next coming weeks. So now all of a sudden you'll have baseball being played on a soccer pitch. And we can hear all this the world is, about this that. This world is mad. It's, Things are going down. Things here. are going down. Well, I, you know, this has been a crazy like rant, and, and, and I understand it. Let's let's uh, let's 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 reel it in for the last three minutes. Let's reel it in for the last three minutes here. All right, uh, the United States women. Let's go over the headlines here, dude. United States women beat Spain uh, in their arguably toughest game. I did not watch the game, but they won two to one, two penalty kicks uh, scored by Megan Rapino. So they are now on to the quarterfinals of the women's world cup. So fantastic for them. Um, I was kind of surprised. I think, you know, when you score uh, 18 goals in three games, you're eventually going to come up against a, a wall at some point. And unfortunately that was Spain, but fortunately for them, boom, they moved on. Um, so U.S. men's national team, on the other hand, uh, beat Trinidad and Tobago 6-0 in what people are calling, like, a revenge game. And here's the thing. No, it's not. They played well. They played well, really, in the second, like, in the second half. Uh, but, yes, it's a, it's a revenge game, so to speak, but, but don't. But don't celebrate this game like you won something. This is Trinidad and Tobago, a team that you should have beat 18 months ago. Listen, if you're if this game were on equal footing where you knocked them out of the biggest tournament with the most viewership in the entire world. Not gonna happen. Maybe then it's a revenge story. But I mean, you won six nothing in a game that really doesn't mean a whole hell of a lot anywhere, but who cares here. about the Gold Cup? Do you care about the Gold Cup? I mean, like it's again, it's fun, but it's it's not the World Cup. Um, and again, outside of the really outside of like the the um, the Euros, the, these competitions they're they're a little bit, in my opinion, they're a little lesser because they don't have the same kind of star power that the European. Uh, well, the Copa America. I mean, Comnibal tends to have the star power, but unfortunately, yeah. you know, it's just it turns out that it doesn't get as nearly as much attention as it should but the euros let's are definitely just, where it's at let's just play the world cup every year every what every year world cup every oh year. yeah that'll be fantastic world cup every year that'll that's be it. fantastic I, and look for me things, that's it if if the u.s wins the gold cup it'll be a great 
victory for Greg Berhalter and a positive step for the U.S. men's national team, if nothing yeah. else. That's the, that's the, what the, I want. That's what we go. want as American soccer fans. Yeah, the, the deeper they go, the more uh, viewership goes up, the more people watch, especially even with the women too. The deeper they go, uh, everything kind of goes up and you get the belief and uh, – Oh, for the women, anything less than a World Cup title is a failure for me. That's just, yeah, that's just me. That's that. Listen, they set the bar that high. <clears throat> but, that's what happens. That's exactly you know when when this team when the when the national teams play competitive games, uh, it's games you know that are that are outside of friendlies. Uh, that sounds funny. Outside of friendlies, like they're playing outside of a friendly. It's like the parking lot. They might <laughs> the as well. Uh, there, there might be more people. Happen. It just gives it just gives kids opportunities. You know what? Like I see how much people get worked up over these games. Uh, this is a sport that I want to be a part of, uh, and that's what happens. Um, so, any I, I, we always wish them well because when they do well, uh, soccer as a whole in this country does well. So, uh, winning is always always fantastic. But again. It's got to be more about development. And it's got to be deeper than that with the with the men's squad. The women, I mean, you can't you can't really say anything bad about them. They're they're really good at what they do, um, masters of the craft. Uh, and it just seems like they just put out a ridiculous powerhouse squad every single tournament. So yeah, it's fantastic. I uh, what of the way? I'll tell you what. I was kind of surprised last week when um, when the U.S. men's national team played against Guyana, and. Guyana gave them a run for their money for like the first 20 to 25 minutes. I thought Guyana was going to get the first goal. And I was like, what the hell is happening? You know? Yeah. But we wound up taking that one too. But look, it's, it's, uh, you support your country and you know, I am looking for, I think, uh, Italy plays tomorrow in the women's world cup. If I'm not mistaken, 12 o'clock against China. Yes. China. China. Playing, China. Playing against China. Uh, <laughs> Fantastic squad, great squad. Your people know it. My people know it. It's fantastic. Uh, anyway, moving, <laughs> moving right along. Two of my here. favorite, my two favorite foods are squaring off tomorrow. It's fantastic. Chinese and Italian. We got the cannelloni versus the egg rolls. Wow. We got the lo mein versus the spaghetti. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I get that. That's it. That's uh, it. Look, we you know this has been a really interesting episode. That's that's for damn sure. We appreciate you joining us. Smash the like button if you had fun spending some time Listen, uh, commiserating. This is what happens. This is what happens when you don't have like consistent flow of games. Oh, don't worry, just, dude. Like, don't worry. We're gonna have off. a game to talk about seven days a week pretty soon. <laughs> Our episodes are gonna have to be like three hours long just it's unbelievable. to cover everything. Unbelievable. We do hope that this fills your need for nycfc content because there's always there always seems to be a lull for that uh and for that we know we do appreciate you spending the time with us you can yeah. you can hit us up on facebook instagram and twitter at dudes in blue we're there whenever wherever we're, we're always there we're just there like you can always just hit us up uh and then uh, if you like the show please leave us a review on itunes or facebook it helps people just like you find our show it's really really important for the club and more importantly for us because you know we like talking to you but we don't like talking if there's none of you <laughs> we don't we don't have that problem fortunately enough you guys are awesome so dude we'll be back monday night talking about uh, the philly match and lots lots of other soccer crap that's going on because my god i feel like it's never going to end this summer's it's literally a summer of soccer but we'll be back uh, Monday night live at 8 p.m. for the Facebook Live for episode 159. Tuesday with the pod, as always. But uh, we'll be back next week, guys. Until then, though, stay red, stay white, blue? and blue. Ooh. You see what I did there? Very nice. You see what Very I did nice. there? Very nice. U-S-A. I like that. Scoundrel you. <laughs> <laughs> see you guys later.